All right, let's take a look at the last problem, uh, question 13, and we'll see what they're asking us for. Uh, they want us to determine the inductor current after one half time constant has elapsed after the switch has been thrown. And it gives us that value, that value, and that value. Okay. Uh, so time constant, let's go and, well, actually, let's go and pull out what we know. So time is going to be equal to uh, 0 0.5 tau. Um, so that's, that's good for us. Um, and we notice here, so initially, before it was uh, attached to the current source. But after we throw the switch, switch connects there, and it'll disconnect from there. Now we notice it will be, so time infinity, it will be attached to the battery. Okay. Uh, so they gave us time constant, and it's kind of pushing us towards uh, using the charging and discharging equation. So we'll kind of go and write that out. So we'll uh, write that out right here. So I of L of T be equal to I of L infinity plus I of L initial minus I of L at infinity E to the minus T over tau. Okay. And let's kind of pick out what we know. Um, so we know time uh, and that's it. But we know, uh, so actually, we'll say that kind of towards the end, but we don't know this, we don't know this, we don't know that. But we can go find those. Um, so initially, so this is our time is equal to zero circuit, where we're attached to the uh, current source. So we know that this current will come up through here, where this is three amps from the source. Uh, it'll keep traveling down through the switch because it can't travel down open wire, so it won't go to the voltage source at all. Uh, and something important is we have to assume uh, circuits was in steady state before we throw the switch. And switch. There we go. Okay. So, how do we know how an inductor, so steady state inductor with current running through it? So, if there's current running through this bad boy, then we can replace it with just a regular wire. So, an operating in steady state, the inductor just acts like a wire. So now what this current sees is, okay, um, I've got resistance in both directions, so I'll send some that way, and I'll send some that way. But then that current reaches this point here. When it reaches this point, it sees it can either go this way, where there's resistance, or this way, where there's just a wire. And it's going to say, yeah, I'm good, and it's not going to travel down that way. So you can effectively just remove that because it's not going to do anything for us. The current's not going to travel down that way. Okay. Um, remember, we still have our inductor right there. So if we can find the current here through R3, since it's on the same wire as this inductor, then we can uh, find the current at time zero. So let's do that. Uh, we know that this will be three amps right here up until this point. Then it'll split apart and then these two will come back together here to form three amps. So the easiest way would be to find uh, the current through a current division. So I will write uh, I R3, where this is I R3 up here, will be equal to R parallel over R3 times the current source. But we need uh, the R parallel first. So let's go find it's the ugliest R I've ever written. Okay. 
r parallel will be r3 times r1, 2, or r3 plus r2. And these values are uh, 2 times 1 over 2 plus 1, which will give us 0 0.67 ohms. So let's just go plug those in. So 0 0.67 ohms over R3, which we said was 3 ohms. And then the current source was 3 amps. Sorry, and this is this should be uh, 2 in the bottom here. It should be 2 in the bottom. And that will give us uh, 1 amp is equal to I R3 which we know is equal to I of L at time zero. So I of L at time zero is one amp. Cool. So now we know, uh, we know that bit. So now let's go find um, the, time, the current at infinity. So this is going to be uh, our current at time infinity. Plus minus. Okay. And then, yeah, there we go. So our inductor. R4, R2, and R3. So at our time is equal to infinity circuit, uh, we notice that we have an open terminal at the top. So that means that effectively it doesn't do anything for us. So now we only have just the voltage source doing uh, supplying to our circuit. So now if we're going to let this run to infinity from our same concept that we had here, we'll let it run to steady state, so to steady state, the uh, inductor will just go ahead and act like a wire. So now let's look at the uh, source again. So this will have some current come up through here, hit this point. See, it's got some resistance that way, some, some, some current that way, some, some resistance that way. Not like that. There we go. Okay. So now it reaches this point and uh, it sees that it has uh, an option to go this way where there's resistance or this way where there's just a wire. And like we know that current wants to follow the path of least resistance, uh, it's going to say, I'm good. I'm not going to travel down this branch. I'm going to send all of it down this wire. So once again, this doesn't receive anything. Okay. So now if we can go and uh, determine uh, what this is going to be, It'll be easy breezy. Uh, so once again, the current through R3 will be equal to the currents through the inductor at time infinity because they're on the same wire. So how do we find the current through resistor 3? Well, we could uh, go find R parallel and then we can find an equivalent resistance and then find the current um, and then do a current division. That's one option. Uh, another option would be to walk this outer loop and do a KVL. So let's do that. Let's do uh, the KVL on it. So if we start at this point and then we walk away around, we hit the negative terminal of the voltage source, so negative VS going through here with the positive terminal. Uh, voltage R3, 
And then we travel down through the inductor. There's no voltage absorbed. And we end up back where we started. So set that equal to zero. Therefore, VR3 is equal to VS, which is equal to six volts. That's good news for us because now what we can do is say that where that was the inductor, this is R3, which is two ohms, to find our current, we can say I R3 be V R3 over R3, which gives six volts. 2 ohms, which gives us 3 amps. And that'll be equal to I of L at time infinity. Fun stuff. So now we know these two. So the last thing that we had to do is uh, just plug and chug. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. So V of L at 0 0.5 tau will be equal to uh, 3 plus 1 minus 3 e to the minus 0 0.5 tau over tau. And these will cancel out. So because our time is in terms of tau, that will cancel out. We don't even have to determine tau. It's great. Okay. So when we plug all this in, we will get one point seven eight six nine amps. That's our final value. And let's go see what we got. Awesome. And our final answer looks like it is the same after we do some rounding. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, once again, I uh, hope this helps. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, leave a comment if you believe aliens are real down below. Uh, make sure to sign in for attendance. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.